You're using the options pattern to represent strongly typed configuration values in your code, but how do you actually make sure that you provided the proper configuration values in your application settings? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement validation on top of the options pattern to make sure that you always provide the correct configuration values in your application. I'm configuring the outbox settings here using the options pattern and I'm fetching the configuration values from my application settings, specifically from the section with the name Outbox. Now, if I go to my web API and I open my application settings, you can see I have the Outbox section defined and it has a few configuration values inside that match the properties I have on my Outbox settings class, which you can see here. We have the interval in seconds, the batch size and the retry threshold, and they are all integer values. I'm going to do two things now. I'm going to register the Outbox settings as a service so that I can resolve it directly without having to go to the iOptions interface. And I'm going to create a minimal API endpoint so that we can inspect the Outbox settings values. I'm going to register the Outbox settings as a singleton service. So I'm going to say builder services at singleton and I'm going to use the variation that allows me to access the service provider. And I'm just going to resolve the I options of Outbox settings by calling get required service and specifying I options. And then we specify Outbox settings as the options that we want to resolve. And I just return the value which contains the Outbox settings instance. So now I can inject the Outbox settings as a service directly in my minimal API endpoints. So let's go ahead and define that minimal API endpoint. I'm going to do that here by calling application map get let's give it a route of settings outbox so that we know that this is the outbox settings and for the request delegate i'm just going to resolve the outbox settings as a service our minimal api is going to be able to resolve the outbox settings properly and then inside of our request delegate i can just say return results okay and i can return the settings directly and it's going to be serialized as a json Let's run the application now and see what response we get from this endpoint. If I hit our endpoint now from Postman, we're going to get back our Outbox settings and you can see that our configuration values are properly set on our Outbox settings instance. Let's examine what happens when we accidentally provide the wrong configuration section for binding our application settings. Let's say instead of Outbox, we set Outbox settings here and we don't have a configuration section like that in our application settings. This time, if I hit our endpoint from Postman, we're going to get back a response, but we're not going to run into any errors, just the default values for our application settings are going to be zero. This is bad because this is silently failing and we're not even aware that we have a potential problem and our configuration values are not properly set. We're going to introduce validation on our Outbox Settings class. So let's go to our Outbox Settings and here we can add validation by defining data annotations on our properties. So I can say that interval in seconds is required. And for example, for the batch size, I can say that this is a range and the allowed values are from one to 100. We can also say for the retry threshold that the valid range is from one to let's say five. With this in place, we have to slightly change how we configure our Outbox settings. We're going to have to use a different approach by calling builder services add options and we specify our Outbox settings. Now I need to say how I want to bind my Outbox settings. So I can say bind configuration and again specify the Outbox section, which is the proper section in our application configuration. And I have to call validate data annotations and this is going to check the data annotations on my Outbox settings and validate that everything is in order. So let's get rid of this old way to configure our Outbox settings and let's set an invalid value in the application settings. So let's say for the batch size, I specify 101 and for the retry threshold, I'm going to specify a negative number just to see what's going to happen. If I try to get our Outbox settings this time, we're going to get back an options validation exception. And if we take a look at the error message that we get, you can see that it says that the batch size must be between one and a hundred. And also for the retry threshold, we get that the value must be between one and five. We can conclude that our validation is working correctly. So that's a great start, but there is one caveat to this approach. The problem with the validation that we introduced by calling validate data annotations 
is that the validation is only going to run when we resolve the I options of Outbox settings from the dependency injection. And this is going to happen when we hit our endpoint and try to resolve the Outbox settings. So even with this validation in place, we aren't aware that we have a problem when we are starting our application. So wouldn't it be great if there was a way to make the validation run on application startup? Luckily with .NET 6 and .NET 7, which is what I'm running in this project, we have a way to do that. After we call validate data annotations, we chain a call to another method, which is called validate on start. And what this is going to do is it's going to force validation of our outbox settings at the start of the application and not at runtime when we resolve the outbox settings instance. So let's see how this is working. Before I show you how this validation is working, I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the videos that I'm preparing for you in the future. To show you what's going on, I'm going to switch the startup project to our web API project and I'm going to start it through IIS Express without debugging, for example. And this is going to open the browser window. And you can see that we get an exception at application startup. And more specifically, we get the options validation exception, which means that our validation on the outbox settings is now running when our application is starting. And you can see that we get the error messages for the batch size, that it must be between 1 and 100 and we get the error message for the retry threshold that it should be between 1 and 5. If you need some more complex validations than what data annotations can offer, you can do that by calling the validate method, and this allows you to specify your custom validation function. You get the outbox settings instance, and you can perform any validation you like. You just need to return a boolean value representing if the validation was successful or not. For example, we could define a custom rule that if the interval in seconds is equal to zero, then we want to fail the validation, and we do that by returning false from the validate method. Otherwise, if the validation was successful, we return true. You can even define a custom error message if you want by using the overload that supports specifying an error message. I hope that you enjoyed this video about introducing validation to the options pattern. Take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen right now. And until next time, stay awesome.